Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Super Metroid Randomized with me, Get Daved. So, I think we've gotten everything. Every time you defeat one of the bosses, the light goes out from their eyes. It always struck me as odd that, uh... Dragon, I believe is his name, would be in with uh, Mother Brain. He just appeared to be like, or she, he just appeared to be like the parent creature of those Eviers that we were fighting over there. I guess it was guarding something Samus needed. Down into Turian we go. For those of you who have never played this game, you're in for actually some of the simplest and earliest meaningful storytelling in a video game, actually. Good start. Fall in the lava. Alright, this is also going to be our first encounter with Metroids. For those of you who have not played every game in the series, you kill a Metroid by freezing it, whoop, freezing it, and then popping it with five missiles, unless it's Metroid Prime, in which case I think you only need the one. Also in Metroid Prime, you can overwhelm them with uh, firepower when they're unfrozen as well, and that works. Other things to note, let's say you made a mistake and they lashed onto you. Well, you've got a couple options. I recommend rolling up and dropping a power bomb, and then dropping another power bomb, and then dropping one more. That'll kill those pesky Metroid. You can also do that if they haven't latched onto you. I guess that's important to point out. Uh, your other option is to run back to the last door, because you can still shoot. You can even shoot other Metroids, you just can't shoot the one that latched on. Metroids also stay dead. They don't respawn if you go back into the room, I think. This is also very similar to the Touring Command Center in Metroid 1. It's actually pretty much exactly the same. When I had the NES as a child, this is where I got. This is the closest I ever got to beating Metroid. That last guy lashed onto me, and in those days, the doors didn't stay open. The blue doors didn't stay open after you opened them. Alright, so these guys are pretty tough. You can pop them with a large number of super missiles to kill them. But uh, no one wants to do that. So I recommend you just leave them alone. They're annoying enemies. So we've got a variety of enemies that are turned into dust. Also, some of you may remember the Metroid hatchling that uh, hatched in front of Samus and thought it was she was his mum. It got bigger and has been eating. Alright, we don't want it to kill us here, so I'm just gonna transfer the energy over from the reserve tanks. You don't actually need to do this. This is to aid a demonstration later, but it'll happen automatically if it needs to. But it's okay, because this thing's going to suck us dry. Because that's what Metroids do. Unless it recognizes Samus.
little interesting tidbit that it stopped. All right, if you are really, really low on energy, below 30, including everything, and you press LR down and fire, and hold them all, Samus can do something called the Crystal Flash to recharge. Consumes 10 s missiles, 10 super missiles, 10 power bombs, plus the one power bomb you have to drop to initiate it. So we're not totally screwed because the Metroid didn't take our ammo. It did almost eat us. And now to the very final point of the game. I recommend not saving at the save point as it is past the point of no return. Alright. Our little other little things to note, these uh, barriers I'm shooting at take 11 hits. Well, they regenerate. They take 10 hits but regenerate. And it doesn't matter what you shoot at them, super missiles or whatever, so you'll, since super missiles have a slower rate of fire, you'll probably end up shooting more at them. No. You can see how concerned I am with the waste of my missiles. Alright. Mother brain now, just like in the original game. A shattering event will occur whenever you fire a couple missiles, regardless of type. If you want to make your life easier, not that it should be that big a deal, freeze these little guys first, and then just start popping the big missiles. Game over, man. It's best if you can just get into a nice little tempo of shooting charged plasma shots at the mother brain. The mother brain is sadly one of the most disappointingly easy bosses ever. It starts shooting that super brutal, uh, beam of death when you've beaten it pretty close to within an inch of its life, and now this means I'm past the hard part of the fight. The bad news is we're going to die this way. We can try getting up. Take that! speed things up here. You can actually accidentally kill yourself that way as well. Because this attack does a, certain, a fixed amount of damage. Uh, Samus has got nothing left in the tank. Also, while she's firing at you, you can also take off the gravity suit and die that way as well. If you want to change it up. Must resist. Still hungry? Now you can see the Metro Hatchling not all that bad. Remembers its mom. Oh, 
No, run away! I found that quite moving as a boy. Also found this quite moving too. You can just hold down the old shoot button. called the hyper beam. Now the interesting thing about Super Metroid is that with the incident at the end with the Metroid hatchling and everything, there's actually quite a bit of story going on considering there's not a word of dialogue. And in Metroid fashion, you have three minutes to escape, or you have, you have to get off of this planet. It's not always three minutes, but there's a time bomb. We'll still worry about completing the map, though. Yeah, not too bad, right, everybody? Okay, I'm gonna start taking this seriously, though. And just remember, there is something I want to show you a bit later that will require a little bit extra time. These look like the steel space hunters that, uh, or pardon me, space pirates that you could only hurt when they were doing their kung fu kicks, you may remember. They are not the same. Uh, there's, like, you can kill them with the uh, screw attack and everything. Or you could just shoot them with the hyper beam as well. I'm not sure what this looks like on your end, but it is tough to see for anyone. Alright, easiest way to get out of here, I actually recommend... Uh-oh. Not quite yet. I uh, have come to recommend using the spring ball. Whoops, get back in the spring ball! You can do wall kicks, you can do all sorts of things, but the spring ball is actually quietly quite dependable. And if you're wondering if you can get to that power bombed door before, where we did the shine spark to get up the shaft really quickly, what are we talking about? Oh, I got distracted. Um, you can still go there, but the door won't open. It's a metal door now. We only have a minute 13 till the planet blows up, but I do want to make a quick detour to visit all the aliens that didn't attack us on Thieves. These four guys. Out you go! Kirby! Yeah, it doesn't matter. They have no way of getting off this planet. But, if you want to give them a chance... I mean, they could have just followed me, but... Time is short. Actually, you know what, while we're at it, I am going to check out a little bit to the left here. We've got lots of time. Open! Yeah, that door's metal too. I'd never actually checked it out that I could remember, so I thought now was a good time. Alright, now is also a pretty good time to think about leaving. Overshot the mark a bit. And you know what? There's still time. Why don't we check? Oh, no, now there isn't time to look. Find out on your own if that door is sealed. Ah, there was time. Gonna have to live with that regret now. First time I played through, I remember barely getting off the planet in time and not screwing around with the Etacoons or the little critter who showed me how to do a spine shark jump. Uh, sh shine spark jump. Also, it appears the time bomb they used was a lot bigger in this game, as it blew up the entire planet.
pixels were completed successfully. Well, that was Super Metroid, or a version of it. Hope you all enjoyed it, particularly you, Makoto. You can see, Metroid Prime, although it's um, a 3D game, and I guess a first-person shooter would be a bit of a misnomer, but it's a first-person 3D game. It did uh, rip off quite a few design elements from Super Metroid. Um, the areas are pretty much themed the same way. A lot of the music is even the same. A testament to the game's uh, greatness. A lot of people... Super Metroid is widely considered one of the best games of all time, and I've seen it at the number one spot on quite a few lists. I think that's a bit high praise for it, but it's definitely a really great game, and it's a superb example of level design. Also, it's a superb example of what relatively small design teams can do. Look at how few people are under each category. Let this be inspiration for all the indie developers out there. There we go. They had more people involved in the print. Like, that's the manual, the box, and then a poster they sent to Nintendo Power. George Seinfeld, nice to see he's doing well. I don't think I uh, beat the game quickly enough. I always find this so haunting. Oh, I did. Yes, Samus is the American gladiator known as Ice. And has a cool symbol. Don't! Well, everybody, thanks for watching the LP. Post in the comments section if you know where that last one is. I bet I probably... Maybe I saw it and walked away from it earlier in the LP. Well, <laughs> that's how you find 99% of the items in the game. Thanks for watching the LP, everybody. Uh, seriously, tell me about that 1%. But make sure nobody else has. And uh, I'll see you in the next LP.